Rich and Keely Yor joins us now for the football roundtable. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Max Brown back with you on Trojans Live. And, you know, it's funny, Keely, we were talking before uh, we started. There's sort of less talking points this week because the team's just kind of getting better and chalking up wins. Was there anything that you came out of the Fresno game and felt like, hey, I really learned about this USC team now. It's so funny you mentioned that because I do a recap podcast with Dion Bailey and we were kind of like, offense is good. Yeah. We, we know this. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it's hard because there's not a lot of talking points where you're like, this needs to get better. Obviously, we saw that Caleb Williams, you know, is human. He wasn't the Superman we've seen in the first two games. So, But we saw how he can adjust. And the guy you had on earlier, Solomon Bird, continues to shine. I thought it was really interesting how Lincoln Riley highlighted him in the post-game press conference. He said he stopped and he said, Solomon, how many reps did you have in the Rice game? And he said five. You know, and he kept working and working. And I think that's a real bright spot because when you have guys like Romello Height get hurt, you need those guys behind them to, to step up and contribute. And that's what we've seen. So just interesting things like that. To me, I think it's, it's funny when Sean hit the, the nail on the head with this question to coach of, you know, there's just so many different ways this team can beat you. And that to me may have been the question going into the season is you knew this offense was going to be good, but was, but was it going to have to be every single week where you have to outscore people? And I walk away after week three saying we can rely on this defense at quarters at times. I don't think we can win a game necessarily 17-14, nor will we have to. But also offensively, too. If, if, you're, if you're Fresno State, maybe there was at times you, you slowed the passing game down just a tad. I'm not saying big time. But there was a run game a little bit. And then Caleb Williams' legs show up. And it's just like there's no answer that you can have defensively to defend this offense at this point. Defensively, yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I watched, I'm watched. i watching the game today, and I remember you kind of calling me out during the game and saying, yeah, Sean, you're getting a, little, right. you're getting, a little, <laughs> getting a little negative on the defense. And I remember that the drive, I think it was like a five-play drive, and they had two big op- explosive plays, and they scored a touchdown. And I'm watching the thing, and I'm like, man, they only scored 17 points right. here. And I'm watching the drives, and I'm like, oh, they're getting three and outs here. They had, you know, a nice sack. I mean, and the defense, you can see the pieces, I think. You can see the parts. Yeah. You can see it coming together. You can see what Alex Grinch envisions. But you also can see those early, uh, not enough experience in the defense mistakes. And I think that's what's kind of popping up. And you have to get rid of those. Obviously, explosive plays like that are going to kill your backbreakers for defense. But if they can clean those up, man, you can see some real like special elements, I think, to this defense. Yeah, and that's what – it's a hard defense so far to get your head around. And the stats back that up. I mean, I was looking at it today. They're 103rd in the nation in rush defense. That's awful. Yep. I mean, that that really is. And so, if they lose a game, and that's why you know this weekend Oregon State a great rushing attack. I think everyone would be like, "Yep." I mean, you got to play run defense to win games. But they're second in the nation in sacks. They're fourth in takeaways. They're eighth in red zone defense. There's like some really high end things happening on this yep. defense, and that's where it's hard. There's sort of nothing in the it's middle. The, it's those explosion plays that really offset. They really skew the numbers. I remember we we always talk about the defense. Like after a game, you'd be like, "Oh, if we would just take this run off, we'd, we yep. only gave away two point eight. But those so those are real plays, and you have to fix them. But they really just throw off the numbers. I think. And it's so hard because you're like, "Oh, this defense is opportunistic." Well, what well, can you really bank on that? And Coach mentioned the word, like, hey, we're opportunistic. Well, that is a trait to some degree. I mean, there are teams that consistently lead the country in turnovers. Maybe that's the identity of, of, of this defense. And on the flip side, the fact that the offense has not had a turnover, or at least Caleb's not thrown yeah. a pick at all. That's impressive. Both those factors, especially with how explosive this offense has, be, has been, is, is huge. Yeah, but it makes you go, is there going to be, is the foot going to drop at some point where you do have a turnover or something like that? But I will say, like, it's game three. It's a new roster. Defense is reactionary. You know, you're, you're reactionary reacting to what the offense is showing you so I think at some point we have to like let it evolve a little bit and it's not like Alex Grinch is going this is all we can do and we're amazing he's like I refuse to believe this is the best we can play he's uh, super blunt about it he's always (laughs) we are so don't worry about it Alex Grinch Alex Grinch will give it to you offensively what stood out to me Keely was you know I thought it was funny when Lincoln Riley got hired everyone was excited and I loved that but it was funny to me because these same people were so anti-air raid. And I didn't want to tell anyone. I was like, you know this guy's from the same coaching tree. I think he's great, but you know that he's from the same coaching tree. It's guy that you just couldn't stand. But I think what we saw on Saturday was what makes Lincoln Riley different from many of the people in that class of coach. His willingness and and 
enjoyment in running the football. I mean, that we saw this the last couple of years. You drop eight, and you know you have to be patient. We've always talked about you need to be patient. They were patient outside of a couple drives at the end of the first half. They really took what was there, and they just pounded Fresno to the ground. Well, I think he said it himself here. There's a rhyme and a reason to his scheme. You're not just pulling out random good plays. And I thought it was interesting. Both Austin Jones and Travis Dye averaged over nine yards per carry. And I tried to look at if that happened recently. The only thing I could find, and I'm not an SID, but 2015 USC Idaho was the last time that happened. So I just thought it was interesting. That's you know, Idaho. yeah, everyone talks about <laughs> the air raid, all that, but yeah. you can get it done in, on the ground too. Yeah, I, I, I called it during the game. I was like, just kind of marveling at the, the, the rationale for the plays. It was, you know, it was going left, it was going right. There's a reason. There's a reason we're doing this play. We're setting up this play. We're look, giving them this look. We're pounding the ball here. We're looking here. It was just, I just thought at the time, I was like, whoa, this is like next level kind of stuff. Yeah. Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football, and by Ralph's. Get ready for game day and shop the Ralph's app for all your fresh tailgating faves. Ralph's is a proud partner of USC Athletics. Back for one final segment of Trojans Live next. Trojans are three and zero, oh, and uh, we're about to try the over under again. Presented by <laughs> Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC Athletics. Okay, try to stick with me here, Sean. What the over under is a half a game. Okay, so if you say under, that means zero games. If you say over, it means one or more. I got that. Okay? That's fantastic. So <laughs> half a game that USC loses when the opponent scores less than forty points this season. Max, is Max going first? Yeah. Like first? <laughs> Air. Right. Go ahead, Max. Um, Does anyone need a, a, a clarifier on the I question? I got you. I got you. Looks directly. I, uh, <laughs> it's so wordy. It, I, it's I, terrible. I, I got to tell you. I, I, I'm going to go. Do you have oh, one, Keely? Yeah. Keely, go ahead. I got over. Can we get a rephrasing? I'm going to take it under. Okay, under. I got it under. Yeah, so, under. The point, so the point, the question is, <laughs> does it take more than 40 points to beat this okay, team? Okay, there we go. I like that. I, yeah, okay. Um, over... Yeah, you have to score more than 40 points to be <laughs> uh, In which but, case, I start looking at the schedule yeah. going. Did you answer? I did. I answered <laughs> the other way. Okay. I think that I I think I'm going one loss. So you think it'll it, be a, it, you think if they lose or when they lose, it'll be because the offense, offense going. the offense couldn't couldn't you had a bad day. I mean, or it's a 39-35 game where, you know, the offense, I don't call it a bad game, yeah. but, you know, it's not just a shootout, and I'm thinking of one team in my mind, and that's the Utah Utes, where you might have to uh, play them twice this year. I so don't I'm think going Utah... The, I'm going the over. Yeah, I don't think Utah is going I see over UCLA. 40 to beat UCLA. UCLA is scoring USC, points. Right? Well, UCLA can score some that's points. That's the one team I look at in the schedule that goes, we'll play them in a shootout. I don't know if they can beat USC in a shootout, but I see Chip Kelly going... I'll race you to 45 points. Wait, just so mm-hmm. I'm not saying Utah has to score more than No, I understand 40. what you're saying. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I agree with you. I think if Utah yeah. you know, or Oregon State this weekend wins the game, it's by controlling possession. It's by lowering the number of possessions. Yeah. It's by maybe forcing some turnovers. And somebody has to make Caleb make a mistake probably to win a game. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of still don't understand the uh, question, but I mean – I got to tell you, it probably wasn't the best question. I, I mean, mean that, that is the blueprint, though. Like, look at Oregon State's game there. last week. There was like – Three minutes left in the second quarter, and there was only like four, they only had four offensive drives, like four drives, like total. It was like Oregon State's. Yeah, I mean, very like 10, 12 play yeah. drives. You're drawing it out, and you keep number thirteen, our number thirteen on the sideline. Like that is the recipe to try to beat this team. Yeah, and then I heard uh, we talked about this earlier this season. There was someone said that Oregon State is the team you think Stanford is. You know, <laughs> I, we like went into the, I like that. I like that. Okay. Everyone always talks about Stanford, but they're not really like that anymore. They've struggled to run the football for a few years now. Oregon State is that team that could maybe just try to ground and pound USC. We'll see. They're going to try it on Saturday. It'll give us lots to talk about next Monday and hopefully a better over-under question from me. <laughs> Thank you to everyone involved with our show. It, uh, we appreciate everyone's hard work to get us on each week. And, of course, you can join us every Monday night right here. For Sean, for Max, for Keeley, I am Jordan Moore. Fight on, everybody. Beat the beefs.